we meeting today? Hi, uh, we're gonna meet uh, Reverend Miak. Reverend Miak uh, is um, a Christian. Yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting to talk about faith and how to be issues. Free Community Church. Free um, is actually an acronym for First Realize Everyone's Equal. Ah. Uh, equal um, in God's eyes, um, equally beloved. So uh, we try. I, I remain here and then I became the pastor, you know, after a very interesting journey in some way. Um, oh. Because when I first joined, uh, I was just a member. Uh, I didn't see myself becoming a pastor. Never thought in, never, never had it in my mind uh, to to do that. Um, but as I did more work here, I mean, I felt that I had a calling. And then, as time progressed, I realized, hmm, I think maybe this is the work that I'm supposed to do, right? Um, Can you explain a bit of the church, the church, uh, and also the re relation with LGBTI or how LGBT, right? And um, uh, because it's a free community, uh, so just explain the concept, maybe a bit of the history. So I will, I will start with um, what is free community church. We are inclusive church. When we were founded in 2003, uh, it, we were very intentional that we are inclusive. Not gay, not lesbian, not LGBT, but inclusive that welcomes all people. Of course, our demographics is not that um, diverse. Uh, I think... We may have maybe 10, 12 straight people coming to church. Um, they are growing, uh, but that's about 10%, right? <laughs> that's the reverse of, of, of um, the LGBT population um, out there. Uh, but we are still the only progressive church and the, still the only inclu inclusive church in Singapore. We want to be part of society and not a separate group um, in our mm. own ghettos and stuff. Um, of course, we wouldn't have our own social circles in some way. But you said the 90% is LGBT. About 80-90% are LGBT okay. here. Yeah. yeah, Because that's the only place that we are welcome. Um, I do know that there are some LGBT folks who go to other churches, but um, this is the space that accepts them and welcomes them as who they are. And mm -hmm. how, how, do you, how do you try to avoid the ghetto, the ghetto concept in having... We can't a large majority of LGBT. I think that we will always be majority LGBT. Uh, in in how I see uh, my own um, vision or my own um, hopes for the church is um, for the um, allies who are coming. They reach a level where there's enough of them for them not to feel like they are tokens or they are strangers um, but they'll never be the majority because out there we are always a minority and LGBT people always look for somewhere where they feel safe mm. and once they become the majority then this space might not be as safe and so they are comfortable here because you know there are other straight people too um, but there's still a majority LGBT people so LGBT people come here they can see themselves oh you're here too. I'm welcome here because other people like myself are welcome here. And that's the, the, the hopes we have. And we hope to serve each um, demographic, each, each you know, part of our community um, at, in the best way we can possible. Um, most people were attending their own churches, um, but this was the group that they can be themselves and share their struggles um, and share their journey of reconciling their faith and their sexuality. So we have grown um, over the years. We have also changed. In the early days, we had few women. Um, and now we have maybe about a quarter women um, in church. Um, and we still hope to get the ratio more balanced um, and working on that. Yeah. 
And the trans trans women, including these women. Yeah, the trans women yeah. are How many? Are there One, many? Two, How was three, the movement? Four, four or five trans women. Yeah. So um, we had and a trans wedding. men as well. Um, yes, we have trans men. Yeah. Because that not all of them are out. So. Yeah, <laughs> there's always the issues of being out, you know, and yes. out within the community, and you know there are so many layers of closets. Part of the journey is about learning about each other. We have um, had a, the a service for the Transgender Day of Remembrance every year in November. Yes. So there are many um, special services that we commemorate. Um, that marks the LGBT calendar. Another thing that impacts our community quite a lot is um, World AIDS Day. Uh, we need to educate ourselves more about HIV AIDS. We need to educate ourselves more about transgender issues and the, the, and the stuff that they face. Uh, and need to um, educate ourselves about you know women and women's place in society and even um, the misogyny that happens um, even in our church. Um, this is not a perfect place. This is a place where um, we make mistakes still. This is a place that we grow. Um, I continue on growing and trying to learn um, about how diverse our community is and how um, there are things that we don't pay attention to that we should. When, you talk, when we talk about LGBT rights, well, it's not LGBT rights only, it's about human rights. How our uh, oppressions are connected. Um, how we can need to stand up for different things because it's all related whether it's racism whether it's Islamophobia um, so these are the things that uh, I care deeply about and I want to lead my this community to think about such issues that if we just stand up for ourselves then what's that? Mm. we need to be a lot more thoughtful about how our oppressions are connected we are not related to any other larger organization. Um, we are not part of the National Council of Churches in Singapore because, um, oh, I think it would be quite dumb for us to register because we surely get rejected. Yeah. And it is not the time to, uh, to quabble about that right now. We might come to a day where we will fight for our membership there, but that day has not come. So we will focus on what we have to do now. So as we go down the, the path here um, to today, we don't see the need to be part of a larger denomination, right? Um, we, we decide for ourselves and we figure out ourselves what direction we want to go. Um, and um, we make the decisions based on a, quite a democratic, well, to some degree, democratic uh, process. And, well, people can vote with their feet if we have gone around the wrong way, I think. We do not want to be thought of as a puppet for another denomination from overseas that, you know, you guys support LGBT rights because um, you're actually a plan from the US or whatnot. Um, this is what we don't want, you know. Mm -hmm. We have our own thoughts about this. We are independent. We think for ourselves. This is not a Western influence. What I would like to hear the pers what the, the challenges of that, the, that this church would face and also like stories of acceptance because I, I imagine that there might be some reluctance from other Christian churches or not really or they don't really care or... they ignore us I think that that's the that's the the main thing that they've, they've been doing is ignoring us um, they might make references to that church and they make reference to that so-called pastor um, but they do not engage one-on-one. Um, -on -one. I mean, I, I wanted to engage. Not to argue, not to debate, but hey, let's talk. But no, no response. I've heard there is an increasing small group of very loud Christians that do not um, help. Loud straight Christians? Yeah. That well, do not necessarily support uh, LGBTI cause, and even in, in legislation-wise, or when we talk more about it and we engage, when we engage, there are these people who are more reasonable. Of course, there are those crazy fundamentalists who you will never be able to convince. There will always be crazy people. That's a given. You will never be able to change their minds. I'm not. I'm not. I am not. I don't think that there's any point in talking to them. But there's a large group of people in the middle 
who can think, who can who uh, who can examine these questions in a more logical way, and they need to think about it. We are not going into your area in some way. Um, we are trying to get the rights that you always had. We are trying to fight for ourselves, our right not to be bullied, our right to exist, our right to survival, you know, our right to love. If we can agree on that, I think that that's good enough. Um, and I think people do, people do are able to reach that point. What may be for you might not be for me, and we accept that. I, I don't like the word tolerance, but we want to be inclusive to embrace the diversity that's within our, our, within our society. And diversity is inbuilt. Every society is diverse. To think that we are not is pretend. It's just pretense. The loud, crazy ones, I think they'll, I think they'll alienate everyone else. Yeah, maybe some people are blinded by the charisma, blinded by the, by the rhetoric, and they remain so. Uh, because it's easy to deal with the boogie monster out there than the demons within. You don't talk about adultery because it's happening right now in your church. You don't talk about divorce because it's happening right now in your church. So you talk about what? Gay marriage. That's, that's one of the easy ways to not deal with shit that you should be dealing with. And so they will implode. The tide is turning. And you know, we are a few steps behind, but you know, if they want to latch on to um, uh, affection that is already on the losing side, Jolly well, go ahead. I think that we are on the side. I think God is on our side. I've been talking here about freedom of expression. Mm. Mm. Um, but usually in general, I speak about like gender expression on the streets, around the LGBT. But how do you see like freedom of expression in Singaporean context? For those courageous people, I mean, like my friend um, Eugene, who is a drag queen, he dresses up in full camp, full makeup, and his dresses are outrageous. And goes to rally, uh, go and went to Ping Dot. He goes to work in that, um, and people might give him a few stares, but he doesn't face any violence, at least not yet. I think that if you have the courage, people might give you a look like, "Oh, you are crazy," but that's that. I mean, there are small, uh, isolated instances of violence, um, and maybe people yell at you, you know, with slurs and whatnot. But in general, I don't think there's much of an issue unless you dress up in a, unless you have indecent exposure, which I don't think people do that um, in Singapore. But freedom of expression, I think there is freedom of expression to some degree. Well unless you start pressing the wrong buttons, which is about politics and religion. And it's actually forbidden to portray positive Not examples for... of... That's what Yang Pa told me. Well, like the media and... For the regulations, yes. it says that they will, they, they, it's not allowed to promote homosexuality. I always ask the question, <laughs> how do you promote homosexuality? Do I give out flyers and say, please join us this, you know, this evening at this you know, conversion um, workshop or what? Right? What is promoting homosexuality? You organize a talk about homosexuality, you think it's promoting. The gay character in yes. Glee, right? Yes. Um, his whole storyline about coming out was cut in the, when it was broadcast here. One of the most powerful scenes was when his father accepted. Do you re- I, I don't know if people I'm you know, well those people who watch Glee yeah. will remember that scene it's moving you know so many of us will move to tears the kind of acceptance c- coming from the father but the whole thing snip why? is that promoting homosexuality? Mm-hmm. I don't think so uh, but it seems that our media, uh, MDA is uh, thinks that way and mm-hmm. are there any challenges against that or any of course we keep asking and they keep uh, giving us vague answers because that's how they get around you know they o- keep re- officially officially they give they tell you it's it's promoting homosexuality i'm like can you define what is promoting homosexuality and what is not promoting homosexuality no they don't so that's how the regulations are, are run a few years ago um, when the film The Kids Are Alright yes. won an Academy Award yes. Yes. Um, it was screened in Singapore the MDA put an unprecedented um, condition on that screening that it can be screened in one screen 
at one time. At 3 a.m. No, I mean like like it can only be shown at this cinema, one cinema, and not and yeah. it cannot be widely distributed. And of course, we have challenged that. Of course, you know they just because they have power, so they just ignore, they don't respond. But the question is why? What gives you the power to only limit it to one print to be screened at one? And, and yeah. Brokeback Mountain. Brokeback Mountain any? was oh, Brokeback Mountain was screened here. I think that the the impact. One of the shows that I think have impact was uh, Liang's uh, Wedding Banquet, which is an Asian context. Uh, there are a few uh, gay-themed uh, movies that was done in Southeast Asia. One is The Chicken Rice Wars, um, and it was filmed in Singapore. Okay. So that, that film too, um, I think, would be those films that change people's perceptions. Uh, and I think these stories need to be continually told. Because MDA's reach is not all powerful, <laughs> um, and so when you put things on YouTube, that's out of MDA's reach. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of um, filmmakers and especially documentary films have gone on to YouTube as a channel um, to to do stuff. It's not just about expressing ourselves, right? But also communicating something across. Uh, if they hear our stories, if they know our lives, then it is much harder to look at people with a certain, you know, with disdain. Um, and I think that that's something that uh, that we are trying to work on to get our stories out there and for people to know, um, for people to hear. Because it is through knowing and understanding that they change their minds. What is your personal take on that? on personal struggle and because you're talking about let's make them visible right mm. and this this project is about bringing visibility especially when you're looking at the Southeast Asian perspective um, I'm not a big fan of coming out because it's a very westernized very American centric um, perspective of LGBT issue right you need to come out because it's a political statement that I understand and, and you need to come out and you need to keep coming out, right? Like the person who wrote the article and where are the LGBT people? And then my reply was that I'm not gay enough. <laughs> do you, you know, I'm gay, you know. Uh, do I have to wear a pink triangle or paint a rainbow over on my forehead before you know that I'm gay? And we constantly choose to, which situations to come out. Um, but in our context, it's quite different. Our culture is also different the way things are accepted. Um, very often, and I hear so many friends um, share their stories about their parents, their family accepting. It's a silent kind of acceptance. Yes. It's not explicit. Exactly. Right? You don't have to come out and say, Hi Ma, I'm gay. Uh, but they know. I have friends whose, whose, whose mothers will ask for during uh, Lunar New Year, Oh, is your friend coming along for dinner? And this is not a D- normal dinner, right? This is the reunion dinner. Only family members are normally invited to this. And for the mother to ask, you know, is he coming along? For, is he coming tonight? Oh no, is he coming for dinner? Um, that is acceptance. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to come out. They know. Uh, you, you mentioned the, um, the art that criminalized same sex activity between mm-hmm. consent and Jesus adults. And um, how do you see the impact of it? Because it's not um, enforced, right? Uh, well, it, it, there was a, an attempt to enforce a few years ago about this, uh, this guy or two guys that were caught in public in a ba- public bathroom. Yeah, um, Ivan Tan's case. How do you see like, the impact of, of the article beyond just the enforcement of it? I'll give you two examples, okay? Um, one is... Um, a very personal story that I recently got to know about. A young man in his late teens um, was raped by another man, an older uh, gay man. And he could not find a way or any legal recourse because he would incriminate himself, one. Number two, he's not out. Second point is, uh, 377A prevents us from a lot of things. 
Um, I have a friend who tried to register an organization to serve the LGBT community, to build community, to organize events and whatnot, um, and his application got turned down because it is against national interests and national security. And this is the first thing that is uh, in the way of many, many other things, in the way of you know, uh, public sexual health education, yes. that we cannot be explicit about such things. How can you tell, you know, how can you pass a, con- a condom to, to, uh, to a gay man and say, you know, use this and stuff? Well, you're, you're actually promoting, promoting someone to do a criminal act. This, this is not helpful. Um, this also affects how people see um, and how people uh, do counselling in schools for teenagers, you know, and what is told. You know, the first thing you go to is against the law. And people keep writing to the papers as though we are fighting for marriage equality right now. I'm like, we're not even through decriminalising 377A. I mean, we're not even talking about marriage equality and for, in my personal opinion, marriage equality is not the direction to go. Yeah. I will be fighting for um, equal protection under the law, not marriage equality. I want to see us have protection first things first in uh, from discrimination, discrimination employment, employment yeah. health care and all these things yeah. before and inside the movement, is there like a resentment feeling because of the colonization period? I don't feel any resentment to the British. I mean, well, Hong Kong has de- decriminalized, right? We are so backward. We could have decriminalized ourselves as well. Um, don't blame it on somebody else when we have not made that change. Yes, we inherited this stupid law, but that doesn't mean that we have to keep it. There are so many other laws that we have changed over the years. 50 years of independence, we have changed many laws since then. Not everything is colonial. Right, just because it's there, we blame it on someone else, you know. So someone made, someone done something wrong, and we didn't do anything to correct that, and we continue blaming that person. Mm. But actually, we are perpetuating it today. The Singapore government is perpetuating it today. Don't blame it on the uh, on on the British. Yes, it was inherited, but you could have changed it. Mm. The current government, or whoever is in power. Has to be it has to take responsibility as well because you are leaving things as status quo. The other two questions is, how was it for you to relate faith and your sexual orientation? Mm-hmm. Just to share your personal insight on that. Sure, um, we need to know. I mean, looking at the history and how things have changed over the years, we we came from a time where the police were raided the clubs when the police were entrapped men who are cruising in parks uh, back in the 80s and we have come so far we have gay clubs I mean we used to have no okay we had one uh, uh, Vincent's which has since closed down but we have so many gay clubs to, to and bars to choose from we interact without fear you know uh, we've come a long yeah. way because I'm gay, I understand what it means to be bullied, what it means to be discriminated, what it means to be different, what it means to be ostracized, what it means to suffer, what it means to be alone. My suffering connects m- me to other people's suffering. I'm sensitive to that. And I cannot sit by and not speak up for someone else who might be oppressed. Some people see our sexual orientation, a lot of LGBT Christians see sexual orientation, gender identity as a curse. I don't think so. I think it's a gift. Because it makes me different from other people. It makes me think and see things in a different light, from a different perspective. And that's perhaps the gift of diversity in God's creation. I learn how to see things in a different way and to appreciate beauty when people may not see beauty. And I think that that's, that's how I, I, I bring the two together. This is my gift. This is my special power. Uh, last question is about uh, family acceptance and mm-hmm. your relationship. You said your family was, is quite supportive. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and how is it? How how was it? How is the relation with your father, with your mother? And also, like coming out or not coming out, or how how was it for you and, and them? I think that um, oftentimes we assume that fathers are less accepting. The Chinese society is very patriarchal, right? Um, but my coming out. So when I came out, um, I didn't want to come out. My mom actually asked me about about it. You know, in a letter when I was on exchange. And I came out to her. Of course, I told her, don't tell dad. Right? But it was years later um, that I think my mom told my dad. And he was okay with it. Right? Um, and we never talked about it. Though um, it's quite clear, you know, I have books on my table, Christianity and uh, homosexuality, you know, gay stuff all over the place. I think he knew. Right? But there was not those coming out... Uh, until one year during fa Father's Day and I brought them out for dinner my sis was away for work it's a don't ask don't tell does he know that I, no, <laughs> does he know that I know I that know. he knows does he does he think that I know that he knows do I know that he knows <laughs> you know during the dinner we had a very very nice dinner and we were chatting we were laughing it was a great time and suddenly out of the blue my mum said you know in, in Mandarin um we know that you're not going to get married, we're not going to have a girlfriend, as long as you're happy, we're fine. And then I went like, you got to be kidding me, this is Father's Day dinner and they just dropped the bomb, right? <laughs> and then there was a silence. And then everything went back to normal. You know, then we started joking, you know, again, and we, the, con the, the evening went on as this. Um, I think that my relationship with my dad is quite similar to other um, Chinese guys or Chinese gay men where you know you talk about politics you talk about business but you don't talk about emotion the emotional stuff right um, I think that that's that's how they relate uh, maybe it's that generation of men who are not allowed to express emotions um, and that's not um, they have not learned the skills or the, the language to express themselves but I have learned how to accommodate that you know, and that's that's the important thing. Is how do we understand one another? You know, saying "I love you" is very different from loving you. Some people will say, "I love you," but you know what? I cannot accept you. I leave the house now when they come out. Right? Is that love? Love is. is I think it's a, it's a, it's an action. Uh, it's not just a feeling. And so, um, how do we um, understand how our parents love us? And that's the, and not expect them to fall in a certain mold. And when you watch, oh, this person had, you know, the parents and or father is so supportive and whatnot. And then you go, I, I wish that my dad was like, really, you know, all of us are individuals and all of us are unique. And all of us have a different baggage, our different background, different experiences, and we come with different personalities as well. And so the way our parents, our fathers and mothers express their love might be different. And we need to understand that. Dad might be quiet, but well, one of my friend, one of the members here, yeah, is a uh, Drex, performs Drex, uh, Drex shows, and his dad, while not hundred percent supportive and still struggling with it, drives him to work sometimes in full drag. That is love. Yeah. He's not hundred percent accepting. He still struggles with it. Yet, he is in the car driving his son, the drag queen, in full drag to the club. Okay. Wow. Mm. Very powerful. Thank you. I'm a carrier of stories, I think. <laughs> because yeah, on I my, think so. Because I yeah, interact with so more. many people. And you... I can totally relate to it. Everything is the same. Yeah. I understand it. I feel the same way. And I'm not religious, but I am, you know? Everything you say, I can relate to. Hey, see you guys. Yeah. Hi. Bye. Bye. Bye.